Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing another Murder Minute discussion. So, let's start off with trigger warning. This video is going to contain some very graphic details involving couple murders and body mutilation. If you find any of that content triggering or disturbing in any way, you might want to go ahead and click off of this video and tune into some of my more milder content located on other areas of my channel. With all of that said, let's get into this video. So this video is going to be a little interesting. This is the case of Il Mostro. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, this is out of Florence, Italy. So we're going to be hopping over to across the world. Um, this case takes place between 1974 and 1985, and this is actually an unsolved set of murders. This is a serial killer case. Um, they never caught this murderer, and it's kind of uh, reminiscent of David Berkowitz kind of thing. Um, yeah, Son of Sam kind of vibes, but um, and this took place in Florence, Italy, so let's get into it. Florence, Italy had a killer roaming the streets for 20 years who killed 14 people and was never caught. Uh, the murderers were all couples who parked in cars and were sharing intimate mo moments. Again, like I said, kind of Son of Sam vibes. You know, little David Berkowitz kind of thing. Uh, over the years, more than 100,000 men had been investigated in reference to this. Rumors and accusations tore apart many lives, but Il Mostro remains at large. So, Il Mostro was not ravenous in his drive. Police did not realize until June of 1981 they even had a serial killer, and that was at the third murder. So, that in total was six victims. So, not until the third murder scene with six bodies on their hands did they even realize that they had a serial killer. So, um, let's start there at that murder. So, this is going to be in 1981. Uh, Tuscan countryside near a med medieval castle is where we're going to be located at. Uh, says the boy was in the driver's seat with a black mark on his temple, a shattered window. The female was a few feet away. She was naked, shot in the head. Her vagina was removed with a knife. There were, si there were no signs of struggle. The medical examiner advised that the killer did not sexually assault the female, advised physical contact was avoided until the mutilation was performed. So, it's like the perfect crime scene kind of thing. So, you have to think of it this way. Like, if the guy is still at the driver's seat, literally he had to walk up, shoot the guy. If she's a few feet away, she had to run away. So he probably shot the guy, she ran, he shot her while she was running, and he avoided any contact with her until he was mutilating. The medical examiner also stated that the murder possibly, murderer possibly had some surgical or butchering training due to the precision of the mutilation. Also, the knife was a scuba knife with a peculiar notch, and it was a, considered an unusual weapon. Journalists covering the murder actually went through the archives and found a similar match in 1974. It was a couple in a, on an isolated road in Florence. A boy and a girl had been shot. The killer stabbed the girl 97 times and sexual viol sexually violated her with a stalk of a grapevine. When police revisited the 1974 case, they were able to match several items. The shell casings came from the same gun. The bullets were copper jacket jacketed Winchester series H rounds fired from a Beretta 22 caliber with a defective firing pin. So it wasn't even the officers that put together that these cases matched. It was actually a journalist working the case. 
which sometimes happens. Sometimes it takes somebody outside of the case to go, hold up, I've seen this before. Where did I see this before? During this time period, most young people still lived with their parents. So you gotta set the scene on why people were like out here on the countryside. So mo during this time period in Italy, it was very common for people to live with their parents until it was time for them to be married. So, you know, you could be like 20 and still be living with your parents if you weren't married. So if you were dating somebody and you wanted to have like a private moment, like a little make out session or maybe get your groove on or whatever, you would sneak out into the countryside with whoever you were dating. And that's where, you know, you kind of had your little time with your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. And, uh, but there was this group that was called Oh, I'm going to butcher this. The Gilindian, Italian for the Indians, who would stalk the young couples for, int for intimate moments. Sometimes they would just watch, and sometimes they would use sophisticated equipment to record these moments. This group was the number one suspects with these murders. The police wanted to be seen as the top of the, inv the, top of the investigation, so they arrested one of the m members of the group and proclaimed he was a murderer. So they wanted to be like, you know, we got this, we know who's doing this. You know, we're, we're on top of it. Because they just got showed up by a journalist who's like, hey, hold up a second, I've seen this before. Uh, what about this case back here? So they ran out and they arrested one of these guys and they're like, this is the murderer. However, a few months later in October, there was another El Mostro same Beretta, same mutilation of the girl's vagina. One suspect was a priest because his he visited prostitutes regularly. He did not solicit sex. He requested them to shave their pubic area. But he was dismissed. So you had this guy from this group that liked to spy on, you know, kids getting their groove on. You got this priest over here that wants to shave prostitutes' vaginas. So June, 1982, Paolo Minardi and Antonella, Tonella, I can't, I can't even do the last name, were engaged. The couple went to the countryside, but parked close to a main road in an attempt to not get murdered. Hill Mostro attacked with the same Beretta. Antonella was killed, but Minardi was wounded. Minardi was attempting to escape, but shifted into reverse and backed into a ditch. He was stuck and unable to move. Il Mostro shot the headlights out in an attempt to hide the car, but did not have time with the victims like he normally did. So Il Mostro ran. Passing car spotted the car and called the authorities. Minardi was still alive. However, he did die before he could answer any questions. So, they tried to, like, we're going to park kind of close to this road, you know, we'll be alright. Il Mostro attacked, killed the girl. Dude freaked out, accidentally put it in reverse, backed into the ditch. El Mostro shot out the lights, trying to like hide the car, but he didn't have time to do his fun stuff, and he ran. Another car came by, saw the car. They tried to save him, but he died on the way. So Sylvia Della Monica was the state prosecutor at the time, so she fabricated a story that he made it and that he was making statements about the murder. Monica hoped that by doing this, it would make the killer make a mistake and they could catch him. 12 days after the press release, investigators received an anonymous letter. It was an old newspaper dated from 1968 about a double murder of a man and woman in a parked car. 
in the countryside. So, 1968. This is 1982. Next to the details were instructions to look at the crime again. Luckily, the shells were still on the shelf. They matched almost her. One problem. The fem female in the car was a Barbara Loco. Loki. Barbara Loki. She was married. Her husband, Stefana Mello, a Sardinian immigrant, broke down and confessed to the murders. In 1981, Stefani Melli was still in jail and then went to a halfway house in Verona that was ran by a priest at a monastery. Melli had an airtight alibi for those last murders. Well, for all the murders from her murder up. So. What are you telling us? 1982, Melly was in interviewed by a journalist when he stated at the end of the rambling interview, figure out where the pistol is or there'll be more murders. They will continue to kill. The journalist believed that Melly was not alone that night in 1968. He believed that Melly had some companions from Sardinia with him and the double murders were a clan murder. Also, at the point, once Melly confessed, the other members enjoyed the killing so much that they continued with the Beretta. Investigators liked this theory and named it the Sardinian Connection. So there were three brothers from Sardinia, Francisco, Salvatore, and Gianni Vici. The police theory was that the three men were present at Barbara Loki's murder. At one time or another, all considered themselves Barbara's lovers. The police worked a link the Sardinian brothers to Melly and Del Mostro. The bullets were all the same and all of the crimes making linkage easy. Police arrested Francisco Vici. However, the killer struck again September of 1983. So September of 1983, a German couple were in a Volkswagen camper in a secluded spot. Both were shot and killed, but the killer was surprised. It was hold on. I spelled that wrong. It was two men. He thought he got him a man and a woman, but one of the men had long hair. So the Mostro found a magazine of homosexual porn, which he tore into shreds and scattered it around the olive grove. El Mostro's bloodlust was not fulfilled that night. With the news, with the new murder, police refused to release Francisco Vici. The police believed his relatives used the Beretta to throw off the police. This led the police to arrest Antonio Vici. But they were unable to get him to speak. Four months later, the press published that there were two monsters. Following this release, police arrested the remaining Sardinian brothers they believed were present at the 1968 murder. They released Francisco. For the entire winter, the police grilled the two Sardinian brothers, but neither confessed. By summer, there was zero progress and tensions were high because Il Mostro's hunting season was at hand. In July, Il Mostro struck again. This time, Il Mostro added to his usual mutilation of the female's vagina by slicing off her left breast and taking it with him. The news spread across Europe, six attacks, 12 victims, and zero police progress. 
In an attempt to find the killer, a huge reward was offered. Every police branch was competing with their own investigation to solve the crime. So instead of working together, they're competing against each other. Huge rewards are thrown up, which means you're getting tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of false leads. So instead of working together to get to one thing, you're competing against each other. Not a very smart move. Posters and postcards warned citizens and tourists not to go into the hills. The summer of 1985, Ilmostro's most brutal crime occurs. The victims were a young French couple who was camping near a centuries-old villa where Machiavelli had written his infamous novel, The Prince. Ilmostro cut into the tent, and when the couple raised to investigate the noise, Ilmostro opened fire. The female was shot in the face, but the male was wounded in the wrist. The male was an amateur sprinter and took off for the trees with Il Mostro in tow. The male got lost in the woods and slowed to get his bearings. When he did, Il Mostro came up from behind and violently slit the male's throat. The slit was so deep that he sprayed blood for 10 feet into the forest. Il Mostro left the male in the forest and returned to carve up the woman, taking her vagina and her left breast. The bodies were discovered a few days later by mushroom pickers and were covered in insect larvae. The following day, state prosecutor Silva, Sylvia Delmonica received an envelope at police headquarters. When Monica opened it, something bloody fell out. It was the victim's left nipple. Monica immediately resigned from the case and law enforcement at the same time. The police continued to press the Sardinians. They, pro they prosecuted Salvatore for the death of his first wife, who had died in a suspicious fire. The trial fell apart and Salvatore vanished. This ended the investigation into the Sardinians. Police turned, the, turned to computer databases to analyze tens of thousands of men in Tuscany. This entered Petro Pacanin, violent alcoholic with a string of convictions which included sexual assault of his own daughters. Stand up guy right there. Pacanin had been in prison during the off years of El Mastro. 1951, Pacanin beat a salesman to death for seducing his fiancée. Pickney beat the man's head in, then raped his fiancée next to the man's body. Like I said, stand-up guy right there. Police embraced, the police embarked on a 12-day search of Pickney's home. They returned with a bullet and a scrap of cloth. The bullet came from the same box as those used in the murders, the cloth they, tr they tied to the murders. Rumors swirled of evidence tampering. People believed that after 12 days of nothing, police planted the evidence. Pekinee was convicted in the first trial, but acquitted in the, in the appeal, and the prosecutor refused to take up the case again. The prosecutor even accused the police of manufacturing evidence. Police were desperate to convict Pekinee, and they were even chasing a lead of a doctor who paid Pickney for female body parts that were used in the occult rituals, but there was no luck in this. Their, their only piece of evidence that Pickney was involved in the occult was an oddly shaped stone that was in a field near his home. Police believed it was used in devil worship, but it was actually a doorstop from a country home. This is how far they were reaching for anything in this case. Like that are that odd shaped stone right there. That that's used in devil worship. No, that's used to keep my door open. My door holds it open. With all the efforts put forth, Il Mostro was never identified this day no one has been prosecuted for those murders and the body count was 12 people 
and six attacks. Case remains open and unsolved to this day. The last murder occurred in 1985 and it's 2019. So that is the case of Il Mostro and that happened in Florence, Italy, the countryside. There's some beautiful, beautiful land in Italy. So if you go to Italy, just don't spend the night or, you know, make out in a car in the countryside, you should be okay. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're up, notified every time I upload a new video. If you have any ideas for future videos or comments on this video, leave them in the comment section down below. Or if you'd like to send me an article for me to do a video on, you can do so by leaving it in the comment section down below. Or if you can look in the description box, you can find my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and my email. You can send it to me. And if you send me an article that I do a video on, I will shout you out in that video so that everybody knows who did the investigative work behind that video. Anyway, guys, that's going to be all for today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.